Morning folks, welcome back. This video is all about my kitchen kit. After just about every camp video and video where I'm cooking, I get a load of questions in the comments about the gear I use, uh, you know, where you can get hold of it, what it is, etc. So I thought I'd just do a video showing the gear I use specifically for canoe camping, but they're also gear items that I use on other trips and things as well. And uh, hopefully it'll explain a few things and point you in the direction of where you can get hold of them. So we'll start with what I'm carrying my gear in today. Uh, like I said before, this is um, something I'll use for canoe camps. Uh, I wouldn't carry this if I was you know, having to carry any distance. For portaging and for, for short hikes to camp, if you're canoe tripping or canoe camping, then it's fine. This is a 50 litre canoe barrel. It's actually a food barrel, specifically for importing chutneys. So if you do a search on Google or on eBay for chutney barrel, you'll find these. 50 litres, it's got a screw top lid, two handles on the side, so they're easy to carry even if it's not on the frame, which I'll talk about in a minute. And it's good, thick, durable plastic. I like it because I can keep all my gear in there. It'll take the knocks and bumps so I can keep uh, fairly fragile things in there as well, breakable things like lanterns. I also like that it's weatherproof, so I can leave this out in the rain. I don't have to worry about putting it under cover at night and um, you know, nothing's gonna, no harm is gonna come to the contents. But the biggest bonus about this for me is that it doubles as a bit of camp furniture. I can use this as a seat and it's comfortable to sit on uh, around the fire if, you, if you're not planning on taking another chair with you. And it's a really useful table for preparing food, for chopping on, for washing up on as a washing up stand, anything you might wanna just keep things up off the ground, it's ideal. I've got the barrel strapped to my LK35 frame. This is the frame that comes with a, a Swedish Army 35 litre rucksack, popular within the sort of bushcraft community, but that pack comes off. It just hooks on at the top and straps on at the bottom and you can remove it and you're left with a frame, which is really useful for carrying awkward items. Um, this barrel straps on here really nicely. There's a little lip at the bottom of the, uh, of the frame here, where you can see that. So that kind of catches the bottom edge there and then just by pulling all these straps tight it holds it in place. It makes carrying your barrel a lot easier if you've got long portages and because it's on your back you've got your hands free so you can do the portage in one hit, you know, canoe on your head, your barrel on your back. The way I've got the barrel strapped onto the frame means that I can slide other items down the side here, long awkward items to pack like a folding saw, axe, anything like that. Now today I've just got this loaded up with kitchen related items, uh, but it is quite a large barrel, it's 50 litres and I've used this as my only pack on, on overnight camps. You know, I can get everything in there I need if I don't take all the things that I'm going to show you today, if that makes sense. But if you were going on a longer trip or you didn't have far to carry your gear, you could uh, take a dry bag or something to take all your camping gear in and that would free up space in here to take extra items so you could keep all your food and all of your kitchen gear in here. I've just uh, sort of tried to include a bit of a range in here, a bit of variety to show you some of the things that I use, but it really depends on what I'm gonna be cooking, where I'm going, how far I'm gonna to have to carry things. You know, there's loads of, loads of factors. So first out is my food bag. I bought a load of bags recently from a chap called David Fryers, um, and he makes these Cordura bags, all handmade here in England, just superb quality. Um, this is the food bag that he sells and it's got a kind of roll top closure like you'd have on a dry bag. You just roll it up, clip it around and secure it with a, a snap buckle. But what I really like is it's also got a Velcro closure at the top. And um, I'm, sure, <laughs> I'm sure you will know, you know what I'm talking about here. You get back from camp, you open up your food bag and nine times out of 10, it's full of earwigs if you live here in the UK. Um, and it just does my head in. This stops the earwigs, stops them getting in there, stops any other insects and bugs getting in into your food. I'm a big fan of these plastic Nalgene bottles. I have loads of these in all different sizes. They've got a good secure lid, they don't leak, they're pretty much crush proof. Um, and they're just, I, can, I know that if I put something in these, I haven't got to worry about it leaking. They're really good bottles. Um, and they come in a range of different sizes. So I've just put one in here as an example. I might carry, um, eggs in there, I might carry milk in it, I might carry, well, any sort of wet or dry food stuff really. They're also fuel resistant, so you can carry methylated spirits in them, you can carry paraffin in them. They're really good, really good little bottles. Um, there's another one there, a smaller one, so that's got oil in it. This dish here I get a few questions about. This is a butter dish, um, which I haven't cleaned. <laughs> uh, this is a German army, 
butter dish. And I got this from a, an army surplus store. I've never seen another one like it, but I'm sure, you know, you can get hold of them. I'm sure they are available. And um, yeah, it's just got a, a removable plastic insert so you can wash it up easily. It's got a seal and um, it's made of aluminium. This is something I get loads of questions about. This is my spice kit. Now I bought this as it is um, from Pagan Preppers. They're on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram, but they're no longer doing these. Um, you know, they did them for a little while and they've stopped doing them. So I thought I'd give you a bit of information about them because uh, they're pretty straightforward to put together yourself. The pouch is a bullet or small shotgun cartridge pouch and it has this elasticated strip with uh, 12 little slots to put shells in normally. But they also take um, these five mil little plastic vials. You can buy these off the internet, they're really cheap. They slot in there nicely and they've got a little closure on the top, a little uh, push closure on the top so you can put in whatever herbs and spices you'd like to have in them. Basically, it's an inexpensive pouch with plastic vials in. And I'll put links to where you can get those in the description box down below. So that's my food bag. Next out, I've got a kettle. Uh, I don't always take a kettle with me. Uh, it depends whether I've got room for it, but it is nice to have a kettle because water boils really quickly in them and they pour easily and all the rest of it. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail on my pots and pans and things because I have a separate video on that. If you're interested, um, scroll down through the videos and you'll find it there. I've got a bag here with various items that are this sort of shape in, basically. <laughs> um, so, you know, anything that is reasonably flat. I've got the lid for my Pathfinder cup, which I'll talk about in a minute. I've got the insert bowl out of my Zebra Billy can. I've got Maggie's water bowl in there. Uh, chopping board, I get asked quite a bit about this. This is a Trangia chopping board. It's designed to fit in either the Trangia 25 or 27 cook set. And it's just a chopping board with a strainer on it. So if you've got to drain water off pasta or rice or anything, vegetables, you've got a strainer that you can do that. And although it's not a very big chopping board, it's perfectly big enough for cutting up some potatoes or something like that. So that's what that is. And again, I'll put a link below. I do have several other chopping boards that I use. I've got larger ones and I even made one to fit in the rim of this lid here, but because it's such a big thing, it doesn't pack very well, so I don't use it very often. Also in here, I've got the frying pan from my Trangia, which I may use as a frying pan, but more likely to use as a, as a plate or a bowl. And lastly, I've got my trusty old titanium plate, which is bruised and battered, but uh, this, yeah, this is my main plate that I use. I sometimes use it for frying in, but because it's titanium, it's rubbish for cooking in, basically. A hip flask with something nice to drink in for those cold winter evenings. I have a couple of bowls here. These are just sort of like plastic cookses. I've got a 14 centimeter zebra billy pot here in a wax canvas pouch. Um, I'll take this with me if I'm gonna be cooking for more than one or if I'm gonna be cooking something particularly big or if I'm gonna be baking and I'm not taking a Dutch oven with me. Um, you can lay this on its side in the embers of your fire, put a, a grill in here, and I've got one in, in the barrel, I'll get to that in a minute, um, and put food in there and you can bake it or roast it. Put the lid on, um, and then with if you've got one of these clips, you can close the, the handle up and it holds the lid in place and load a load of coals up over the top and it's basically an oven. Yeah, it works really well. I've also got a lantern in here, and I know it's not, you know, cook kit as such it is related because well you know what it's like you arrive late at camp and um, by the time you've got your fire going cooked and getting around to doing the washing up or whatever it's dark or it always seems to be with me so having something to be able to see by is a real bonus plus it's protected in this barrel next now I've got a small Dutch oven um, this is the smallest one I have it's a Petromax FT1 and if I'm going to be doing any baking in camp and I can afford the luxury of the extra weight of this because they are weighty items, you know, they're made from cast iron. Um, then I might take this with me or even one of my bigger ones. It just depends on what I'm doing. Next thing is grills. I have a couple that I use. I have this one here, which is a, an ingenious folding grill made by a Canadian company called Bitty Big Q. And uh, it kind of 
folds out like this. It's a really clever design. And then the legs roll out like this and lock into place. And then you can either use it like that in its narrow mode or you can pull it out and it becomes twice the size. It's a, it's a good grill and you can adjust the height by just folding a section back on the leg or two sections back on the leg and have it closer or further away from your fire. Yeah, really clever design. And then I have this setup here made by TJM Metalworks, which is just a superb bit of kit. It's a fire anchor. So you have a, a rod here which comes in two parts. They go together. You push that into the ground next to your fire. And then you have a grill uh, with a, a coiled holder on the end and a pot hook, a gypsy hook and they just slide down that shaft there and once you've got weight on there it actually kind of locks that in place and stops it sliding down and you can rotate it so you can put your pot over the fire and when you want to take it off you can just take it out of the way like this. Likewise with the grill which is perfectly sized to take a nice big fat steak. You can also rest your frying pan on it and um, yeah, a really, really good bit of kit. Obviously you can adjust the height just by sliding it up and down the, uh, the post, which goes in the ground, move it out of the way. Really, really versatile. Way more versatile than a normal grill. Really, really love it. This is quite a recent purchase and I just can't get enough of this thing. It's really good. Tuck down the back of the barrel here, I have a folding table. And this is something I also get a lot of questions about. It's just a, a simple, metal table with these folding legs so it folds reasonably flat. Um, this is a, a bivy table so if you search bivy table online I actually bought this from Aldi um, you know the German discount food supermarket they don't weigh a lot and they pack up small and it's really nice just to have another platform to put things on just to keep them up out of the out of the mud when you're in camp you know there's nothing worse than having to put your stuff down in the dirt you know keep it up off the ground, keeps it keeps it cleaner and just keeps keeps things a bit more organized. I've got another one of my pouches from David Fryers here. This one I'm using as a sort of possibles pouch for small items that don't have a home otherwise and I don't want to get lost. I've got that little grill here which I was telling you about earlier that fits in the 14 centimeter zebra billy pot. So thank you Richard for that little tip. <laughs> um, yeah that fits in and just creates a nice little platform to rest stuff on so that it doesn't touch the bottom of the billy pot when you're roasting in it or when you're baking in it rather otherwise it would just burn and stick to it and just keeps it off the off the bottom. I've got a folding saw and my belt knife in here um, obviously I won't be taking that with me if uh, I'm taking my my bigger saw but it's just to give you an example you know if I wasn't taking a, a pack saw or, or a frame you know a buck saw then I might just take a small folding saw if weight was an issue um, and my belt knife. Um, we have very strict knife laws here in the UK for uh, obvious reasons um, and you can't just walk around with a, a knife on your belt and I like to keep this well buried until I get to camp so in my canoe barrel is an ideal place for it. It's buried, it's covered over by other things and it's you know it's well out of sight. Once I get to camp I'll put it on my belt and use it but um, yeah that'll often be in there. In this bag here I've got a frying pan. Um, again I'm not going to go into too much detail about all the pots and pans that I have because I have a video on them. It's got this long wooden folding handle so you don't burn your hands when you pick it up and it's long enough so you don't have to get your hand too close to the flames. I'm not sure what steel it is, but it is really good quality steel. There's no rusting on it at all. And um, yeah, you can season it up a little bit like cast iron. Next out is my utensil roll. I get loads of questions about this as well. This is homemade and I have a video on how to make these, a tutorial video. Um, there's a, a two part spreader bar, which goes into a sleeve on the top here. And that gives it its sort of form so that you can hang it up from a tree or from your canoe barrel, whatever you like. And it just means that all of your utensils are organized and, and stored and out of the, out of the mud, basically. Um, so I have a range of stuff in here. There's a little pocket on the end here, which takes a small open hole folding knife. 
for veg prep. This is a stainless steel one, so it doesn't rust. Um, I've got a, a small peeler. It makes very short work of peeling potatoes and carrots and things. I've got a tiny little potato masher here, which was very kindly sent to me by a subscriber. I think this is actually an avocado masher. So if you search avocado, av avocado masher, you'll find these. And um, it works really, really well at mashing up potatoes. Um, in here I've also got this little device here which I get asked about quite a bit and this works with my Pathfinder cup which I'll show you in a minute and it's it's a fish mouth spreader so fishermen use this and you put it in a fish's mouth and it spreads the mouth open so you can get the hook out um, and uh, it works really well as a pot hanger and I have a, a small plastic spork in there as well I've got my normal long handled spoon, which you'll have seen on loads of videos. I really like this because it will reach down to the bottom of pouch meals. If I'm taking a dehydrated meal or even one of those wet boil in the bag type meals, um, they're quite deep, the pouches sometimes, and this will get right the way down to the bottom. So yeah, really good, really good spoon. That's made by Sea to Summit. I've got a tiny little whisk in here which I think I've only ever used once, but it doesn't take up very much room, so that just stays in there, that's fine. Bellows, so just for getting your fire going, blowing, blowing an ember into flame, it's just a hollowed out bit of elder. And I've got a couple of pegs here, which I can use as um, pot supports, if I'm using a sort of like a hobo stove kind of deal. Uh, in the next one, I've got a small wooden spoon and this tent peg type looking thing, and I'll come back to that in a minute, that has a purpose. I've just jabbed that in the ground for now. And then I've got um, a spatula. This is a new addition. If you watched that video on making it, this wasn't on the original. Um, it's just uh, elastic uh, webbing, which I sewed on. Got the idea from Ginge, who, who makes these incidentally. Um, you know, he, he liked the design of mine and he now makes them to order. So if you want one, contact him. I'll put his, I'll put his details below. So I've got a small grater in there, small cheese grater, and a can opener. I'll often take my small little kneel mat in my canoe barrel, just so I've got something comfortable to kneel on when I'm chopping or washing up or whatever. And I've got a couple of old sections of tent pole cut down with a hole drilled in one end and that goes with this little tent peg looking thing here. I'm going to come back to that though in a minute. This is one of two washing up bowls that I have and it has carry handles on it so it makes a really handy kind of tote kind of organizer that sits down in the bottom of the canoe barrel. I can just pull it out and it's got a whole load more sort of smaller items in. So I've got my fire kit here in there I've got some tinders, I've got my ferro rod, I've got various bits and pieces for lighting fire. Obviously that's all related to cooking. So that lives in there. I've got a water filter. This is the biggest one I have. It's the First Need XL Superb Filter. It will remove all sorts of nasties out of the water, including pesticides and things like that. If I'm canoeing, I'll drink water out of the river. So I need to be able to filter it. I could just boil it, but um, you know, a filter is a lot easier. If weight was an issue and I'm not going to be taking this or my smaller filter with me, um, I might take a Milbank bag like this one here, which is a, basically a primary filter, primary filtration bag. This just removes the sediment out of the water and then you need to boil it to make it safe um, and then you can drink it. So that's obviously a lighter, much lighter thing to, to carry, but the downside is that you have to boil the water so it's always going to be hot so if you want a cold drink of water you've got to wait for that water to cool down before you can drink it with this you're just literally filtering water straight out of the river and you can drink it straight away also in here i've got a dromedary bag which is basically just a big water bladder uh, with a tap on the bottom this holds six liters and it's really convenient if i'm using a filter because i can just filter water straight into this and i've got six liters of water i can just hang up in a tree and use at my disposal. Whenever I need water, I can just open the tap, fill up my kettle, whatever I need to do. And obviously when it's empty, it doesn't take up very much space. This ingenious little device here was made by my buddy Ginge, and this is a water collection bag. Put a stone in the bottom of this bag and chuck it in the river. It sinks down and then you just pull it up and it's full of water. 
you can then filter it or whatever. Um, so if you can't reach the water, if the sides of the river, the banks are steep and you can't get down there easily, um, this is a really useful little handy device for collecting water. Down the back here, I have a small collapsible twig stove. This is the honey stove from Backpacking Light and uh, a great little stove. If I don't want to uh, light a fire in the morning or if I'm just stopping for a tea break or whatever, um, just want to make a cup of tea, then sometimes it's easier just to get a stove out. This will run on uh, wood, obviously twigs, but it'll also run on methylated spirits. And this little pouch here, another one of David's pouches, contains my Trangia burner. And then I've got some fuel in a little bottle here um, in one of those Nalgene bottles. I really like it, it's simple. There's nothing to go wrong. There's no moving parts, nothing to fail or break. Um, yeah, this one obviously has been to hell and back. As you can see, I have a new one of these. Backpacking Light really kindly sent me a, re sent me a replacement. Um, but it's all shiny and new. <laughs> and I haven't used it yet, but um, yeah, so thank you for that. I've got another lantern here. This is a, a UCO candle lantern um, in one of the neoprene cocoons. Um, I made a, an oil burner insert for this. And again, I've got a video on that as well, if you're interested, uh, which means that I can run it on paraffin. This is another one of my washing up bowls. So if I don't want to take the bigger one, I might take this. Um, this isn't as stable. There's no kind of rigid rim or anything around it. So when you fill it up with hot water, sometimes it kind of like collapses a bit, but it's all right, it does the job. In the front here, I've got cups. I've got my small Wildo folder cup. I really like these cups. You know, they fold down, they're tiny, they're very, really light. I've got another small titanium cup in here, which doesn't get used all that much, but I do have it there. I can cook in that if necessary, but it is a little bit on the small side. And then my Pathfinder cup, which I use all the time. This is the cup that that fish mouth spreader um, pot hanger works with. This next pouch is my brew kit. I've only just started using this pouch because it's new and I've uh, now started using Nalgene canisters for my tea and coffee and sugar and stuff. So tea and it's labeled because I have coffee in here as well, which is, um, you know, coffee grounds and obviously tea leaves and coffee grounds look quite similar. Uh, so I've labeled them and then sugar. Um, I use these little tea bags with a little draw cord top um, and I use them for tea and for coffee. So, you know, a spoonful of loose leaf tea in there and you can put that in your cup and that's your tea bag. Basically, you can just empty it out. Obviously, the tea leaves and the coffee grounds are biodegradable, so you can just chuck them out into the, into the bushes and they're there to reuse. So I have one for coffee and one for tea. And at the back here, I have my 12 centimeter zebra billy. This is really my sort of go-to billy pot if I'm on my own. Um, the pouch it's in is a wax canvas pouch, homemade, and in the top of it is another little pouch which contains my washing up kit. So I've got scotch bright pads in here. I don't tend to worry too much about getting all the black soot off, but if you do want to clean them, get yourself some of these. This is a scotch bright pad and these are used by decorators for as an abrasive pad for rubbing down walls and things um, you can buy them on on amazon and places and it's basically like the green scourers you can buy for washing up but way more abrasive there's a, a, an abrasive material in them that just cuts through even the toughest dirt and stains so i tend to use those for cleaning my pots and pans um, i've got some biodegradable washing up liquid and also in here i've got some of these um uh, antibacterial wipes so if I'm preparing poultry for example and I've, I've handled it um, you know you've got to be so careful just give your hands a wipe get all get rid of all that bacteria before you start handling anything else and then in my zebra pot I tend to keep my my gloves uh, you know you're handling hot things around the fire you need to have something to protect your hands so a pair of leather gloves is really a, really a good idea these are marmot work gloves they're not too expensive compared to some and I found them to be pretty good. They are lined. I mean, you know, you can't keep your hand in a fire for ages or hold onto a hot pot for too long, but it does give you a few seconds just to move something around and, and, and put it down without burning your hands. And as you can see, these have been well used. <laughs> so that is it for the stuff that I brought with me today. Like I said, it is canoe camping based really, but a lot of the items that I've shown you, I will use for other trips as well. You know, if I'm going lightweight backpacking, I'll probably just take my Pathfinder cup and a spork. <laughs> And that'll be about it really, you know, a couple of dehydrated meals and that's 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 all I'll need. If I'm in the car, if I'm in the, in the canoe, I've got 
more space and weight isn't such an issue so I can take a lot more gear with me. I've got my utensils there, up out of the mud. I can pick what I need, put it back afterwards. I've got places to hang stuff, so my gloves, for example, can hang over the handles of the canoe barrel. The spice kit just slips underneath that strap there, so it's there at my fingertips when I need it. Place to chop and prep and stuff on the top. If you take another little table with you, you've obviously got additional storage, as I've shown here. Uh, billy cans, anything like that, can just hang over the back of the frame of the LK35 because they sort of stick up and they provide a place where you can just hang stuff and it all just works really well. At night time when it gets dark, I've just got a post there with a peg through so you can hang up a lantern. Casts a bit of light down where you're working for, for food prep or washing up or whatever it is you're doing. And it all packs down into that barrel. Yeah, I, I really like it. I like to be organized when I'm cooking and um, that works well for me. Well, I hope that's explained a few things and answered some of your questions. I'm gonna get things packed away here and battle my way back along this very overgrown river. It hasn't been maintained during lockdown and it's incredible how quickly nature takes back over. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.